Hi, I'm Odin Smith, and I want to share my journey of learning English. Growing up, English wasn't my first language. In my hometown, we spoke Brazilian, and English was something we only encountered in school textbooks or the occasional TV show. I remember feeling a mix of fascination and frustration whenever I heard English. The words sounded so different, and the grammar seemed so complex. I struggled a lot in the beginning. In school, I would often stumble over words during reading assignments and feel embarrassed when I couldn't follow along with English conversations. My grades in English class were average at best and I felt discouraged every time I saw my report card. But I knew deep down that learning English was important, and I didn't want to give up. I decided to learn English because it opened up many opportunities. The realization came to me when I was in high school. I attended a seminar where a successful entrepreneur spoke about his experiences. He emphasized how English had been crucial in his career enabling him to work with international clients, attend global conferences, and access a wealth of information. His words resonated with me. I began to see English not just as a subject in school, but as a key to unlocking a world of possibilities. Learning English meant better job prospects. Many of the best job opportunities required proficiency in English especially in fields like technology, business, and academia. I dreamed of working for a multinational company, traveling for work, and collaborating with people from different cultures. English was the bridge to those dreams. Moreover, English would allow me to make new friends and connect with people globally. I loved the idea of meeting people from different parts of the world, understanding their perspectives, and sharing my own culture with them. Traveling was another passion of mine, and being able to communicate in English would make my travels more enriching and less stressful. So, with a heart full of determination and a mind focused on the endless possibilities, I embarked on my journey to learn English. It wasn't an easy path, but every step I took, brought me closer to my goals and dreams. And now, I want to share my story, the strategies I used, the challenges I faced, and the triumphs I celebrated, hoping to inspire and guide others on their own English learning journey. When I first decided to learn English, I was both excited and apprehensive. The excitement came from the realization of all the doors that mastering English could open for me, but the apprehension stemmed from the daunting task ahead. English seemed very difficult at first. The rules of grammar were unlike those of my native language, and the pronunciation was challenging. I remember my first few weeks of seriously trying to learn the language were filled with frustration. One of the biggest challenges I faced was understanding spoken English. I could read simple sentences and understand basic phrases, but when it came to listening, everything seemed to blur into an incomprehensible stream of words. People spoke too quickly, and their words seemed to merge together. Watching movies or listening to music in English felt like decoding a foreign script. The different accents added to the complexity. Whether it was the British, American, or Australian accent, each had its own nuances and peculiarities that made comprehension difficult. Moreover, my shyness was a significant barrier. I was too shy to speak English, even in situations where I needed to. Fear of making mistakes and being laughed at kept me silent. I vividly remember a few embarrassing moments at school where my attempts to speak English were met with giggles from classmates. These experiences made me more self-conscious and hesitant to practice speaking. I felt a sense of isolation, 
knowing that my inability to communicate in English was holding me back from participating fully in class and social activities. The vocabulary was another hurdle. English has a vast lexicon, and many words seemed confusingly similar, yet had different meanings. I often found myself mixing up words or forgetting them entirely. Learning new vocabulary felt like pouring water into a leaky bucket. I would memorize words one day and forget them the next. Additionally, the irregularities in spelling and pronunciation baffled me. Words that looked similar could be pronounced differently, and words that sounded similar could have completely different spellings. Grammar was equally perplexing. The tenses, articles, prepositions, and sentence structures in English didn't always align with the rules of my native language. For instance, the use of articles a, an, and the was a concept I struggled with. I often used them incorrectly or omitted them altogether. The difference between past perfect and past simple tenses, or when to use the present continuous tense, was confusing. The subtleties of these grammatical rules were not easy to grasp. Reading in English posed its own set of challenges. I could manage short paragraphs or simple texts, but longer passages with complex sentence structures and unfamiliar vocabulary were intimidating. I often had to look up multiple words in a single paragraph, which disrupted the flow of reading and made the process laborious. This made me reluctant to read, as it felt more like a chore than a pleasurable activity. Despite these challenges, I knew that giving up was not an option. I had to find a way to overcome these obstacles and make progress in my English learning journey. Recognizing that I needed a structured approach to tackle these challenges, I decided to take my first step by enrolling in an English class at a local community center. This was a significant decision for me. The community center offered evening classes for adults, which fit perfectly with my schedule. I signed up for a beginner's course, feeling both nervous and hopeful. The first few classes were overwhelming. The teacher spoke mostly in English, which was part of the immersive approach, but it made me feel lost at times. However, the structured lessons provided a foundation that I desperately needed. We started with basic grammar and simple sentence structures. The teacher was patient and encouraging, which helped build my confidence. We practiced speaking in pairs and small groups, which gradually eased my fear of speaking in public. In addition to the classes, I realized that immersing myself in the language outside of the classroom was crucial. I decided to start watching English TV shows with subtitles. This was both an educational and entertaining way to improve my listening skills. I chose shows with clear dialogues and engaging storylines to keep myself motivated. At first, I had to rely heavily on the subtitles, but slowly I began to catch more and more words and phrases without needing to read along. Watching TV shows also exposed me to different accents and colloquial expressions, which enriched my understanding of the language. Shows like Friends and The Office became my favorites because they were not only funny, but also used everyday language that was useful for real-life conversations. I made it a point to note down new words and expressions I came across and looked them up later. This not only expanded my vocabulary, but also helped me understand how words were used in different contexts. Listening to English music was another enjoyable way to immerse myself in the language. I started with popular songs that I liked and looked up the lyrics to sing along. This helped me improve my pronunciation and get a feel for the rhythm and intonation of English.
Karaoke apps were particularly useful as they provided a fun way to practice singing along with the correct pronunciation and timing. Reading English books and articles was another essential step in my learning process. I started with children's books and gradually moved on to more complex texts as my confidence grew. I subscribed to English magazines and read online articles on topics that interested me. Keeping a journal where I wrote summaries of what I read helped reinforce my understanding and improve my writing skills. I also made use of various language learning apps and online resources. Apps like Duolingo and Memrise offered interactive exercises and quizzes that made learning fun and engaging. Websites like BBC Learning English and ESL Pod provided valuable listening and reading materials, along with exercises to practice grammar and vocabulary. Joining language exchange meetups and online forums allowed me to practice speaking with native speakers and other learners. These interactions were immensely beneficial as they provided real-life practice and immediate feedback. Speaking with native speakers helped me improve my pronunciation, fluency, and understanding of idiomatic expressions. Another effective strategy was setting specific, achievable goals. Instead of trying to learn everything at once, I focused on one aspect of the language at a time. For example, I dedicated one week to improving my vocabulary and another week to practicing listening skills. Breaking down my goals into manageable tasks made the learning process less overwhelming and more focused. Consistency and perseverance were key to my progress. I made it a point to practice English every day, even if it was just for a short period. Whether it was listening to a podcast during my commute, reading an article before bed, or practicing speaking with a friend, every bit of practice contributed to my improvement. I learned to embrace mistakes as part of the learning process and not let them discourage me. Overall, my initial steps in learning English involved a combination of structured classes, immersive experiences, and consistent practice. It was a gradual process with ups and downs, but each small step brought me closer to my goal of mastering the language. The journey was challenging but also incredibly rewarding and it taught me the value of persistence, adaptability, and a positive attitude. As my journey to learn English progressed, I realized the importance of a multifaceted approach. A combination of formal education, self-study, and immersive experiences was essential in developing a comprehensive understanding of the language. I enrolled in English classes twice a week at a local language school. The structured lessons were invaluable. The classes provided a systematic way to understand the complexities of English grammar and sentence structure. Each lesson built upon the previous one, ensuring that I developed a solid foundation. We began with basic grammar rules, such as the use of tenses, subject-verb agreement, and sentence construction. These fundamentals were crucial as they formed the building blocks of the language. The classroom environment also provided opportunities for interactive learning. We engaged in group activities, role plays, and discussions, which made the learning process dynamic and enjoyable. Our teacher was experienced and patient, always ready to clarify doubts and provide additional resources for practice. We were encouraged to participate actively, which gradually built my confidence in speaking and using English in various contexts. One of the key advantages of formal education was the exposure to different learning materials and techniques. We used textbooks, audio recordings, and visual aids that catered to different learning styles. 
the regular assessments and feedback from the teacher helped track my progress and identify areas that needed improvement. Over time, the structured lessons helped me develop a clearer understanding of English grammar and improved my ability to construct coherent and grammatically correct sentences. In addition to formal education, self-study played a crucial role in my language learning journey. I realized that relying solely on classroom instruction was not enough. I needed to take charge of my own learning and supplement it with additional resources. I started using language learning apps like Duolingo and Memrise. These apps offered interactive exercises and quizzes that made learning fun and engaging. The gamified approach of these apps motivated me to practice regularly. They covered various aspects of language learning, including vocabulary, grammar, and listening skills. The bite-sized lessons were perfect for daily practice, and the immediate feedback helped reinforce my learning. Websites like BBC Learning English and ESL Pod became my go-to resources for self-study. BBC Learning English offered a wealth of materials, including videos, podcasts, and articles on different aspects of the English language. The explanations were clear and concise, and the exercises allowed me to test my understanding. ESL Pod provided podcasts with transcripts, which were particularly useful for improving my listening skills and expanding my vocabulary. I also invested in a few grammar and vocabulary books. These books provided in-depth explanations and exercises for practice. I dedicated specific times each week to study these books, focusing on areas where I needed improvement. I found that a combination of digital and print resources gave me a well-rounded approach to self-study. To truly master a language, immersion is essential. I sought opportunities to immerse myself in English as much as possible. This included traveling to English-speaking countries participating in language exchange meetups, and consuming English media. Traveling to English-speaking countries was a game-changer. It provided real-life opportunities to practice the language in authentic contexts. I visited countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. These trips allowed me to interact with native speakers, understand different accents, and experience the culture firsthand. Simple activities like ordering food, asking for directions, and having conversations with locals were invaluable in improving my fluency and confidence. Joining language exchange meetups was another effective strategy. These meetups brought together people who were learning different languages and native speakers who wanted to practice or teach. It was a great way to practice speaking in a supportive environment. I made several friends through these meetups, and we would often meet outside of the scheduled sessions for additional practice. These interactions helped me improve my conversational skills and learn colloquial expressions that are often not covered in formal lessons. Watching English movies without subtitles was another immersive experience that significantly improved my listening skills. Initially, it was challenging to follow the dialogues without subtitles, but over time, my comprehension improved. I started with movies that had simpler plots and clearer dialogues, gradually moving on to more complex ones. This not only enhanced my listening skills, but also exposed me to different accents speech patterns, and cultural references. Throughout my learning journey, I discovered several practical tips and tricks that made the process more effective and enjoyable. Consistency was key to my progress. I dedicated at least 30 minutes every day to practice English, whether it was listening to a podcast during my commute, reading an article before bed, or writing a journal entry. I made sure to incorporate English into my daily routine. 
This consistent practice helped reinforce what I had learned and kept the language fresh in my mind. Setting a specific time each day for practice made it a habit, and soon it became an integral part of my daily life. Building a strong vocabulary was essential for improving my language skills. I kept a vocabulary journal where I noted down new words and phrases I encountered. I would write the word, its meaning, and an example sentence. Reviewing this journal regularly helped reinforce my memory. Additionally, I used flashcards to remember new words. Apps like Anki were particularly helpful as they used spaced repetition techniques to ensure that I reviewed words at optimal intervals. Another effective technique was learning words in context. Instead of memorizing isolated words, I learned them through reading and listening. This helped me understand how words were used in different contexts and improved my ability to use them correctly. Reading books, articles, and blogs on topics that interested me made vocabulary building more engaging and relevant. Improving my listening and speaking skills was a priority. I listened to English podcasts on various topics, from news and current affairs to entertainment and language learning. Repeating sentences and phrases I heard in podcasts helped improve my pronunciation and intonation. I would mimic the speakers, paying attention to their accent and rhythm. This practice not only improved my listening skills, but also helped me develop a more natural way of speaking. Practicing speaking with friends and language partners was invaluable. I joined online forums and language exchange platforms where I could connect with native speakers and other learners. These interactions provided real-life practice and immediate feedback. I found that speaking regularly, even if it was just for a few minutes each day, made a significant difference in my fluency and confidence. Engaging in conversations on a variety of topics helped me become more comfortable with spontaneous speaking, whether it was discussing hobbies, current events, or personal experiences, these conversations improved my ability to think and respond in English. I also practiced speaking in front of a mirror, which helped me observe my facial expressions and body language, making my communication more effective. In addition to these strategies, I attended workshops and seminars on public speaking and communication skills. These sessions provided valuable tips on how to articulate thoughts clearly and confidently. Participating in group discussions and presentations during these workshops helped me practice speaking in front of an audience, further boosting my confidence. Reading and writing were integral parts of my learning strategy. I read a variety of materials, including books, magazines, newspapers, and online articles. Starting with children's books and gradually moving to more complex texts helped me build my reading skills step by step. I made it a habit to read something in English every day, whether it was a short story, a news article, or a blog post. Writing regularly was equally important. I kept a journal where I wrote about my daily experiences, thoughts, and reflections. Writing helped me practice grammar, expand my vocabulary, and improve my ability to express ideas clearly. I also wrote summaries of articles and books I read, which reinforced my understanding and retention of the material. I participated in online writing communities where I could share my writing and receive feedback. Constructive criticism from other learners and native speakers helped me identify areas for improvement and refine my writing skills. Engaging in these communities also provided a sense of camaraderie and motivation. Understanding and applying grammar rules was crucial for accurate communication. In addition to the grammar lessons in my formal classes, I used grammar books 
and online resources for additional practice. Websites like Grammarly and Purdue OWL offered comprehensive explanations and exercises on various grammar topics. I created grammar exercises for myself, focusing on specific areas that I found challenging. For instance, I practiced using different tenses, prepositions, and articles in sentences. Regular practice helped reinforce these rules and made them second nature. To make grammar practice more enjoyable, I incorporated it into my writing and speaking exercises. For example, I would write a short story using different tenses or engage in conversations where I consciously used specific grammar structures. This practical application of grammar rules made the learning process more effective and relevant. Understanding the cultural context of the language was an essential aspect of my learning journey. I watched documentaries, movies, and TV shows that provided insights into different English-speaking cultures. Understanding cultural references, idiomatic expressions, and social norms helped me communicate more effectively and appropriately. I also attended cultural events, festivals, and meetups organized by English-speaking communities in my area. These experiences provided opportunities to interact with native speakers, learn about their customs, and practice the language in a natural setting. Celebrating holidays and traditions such as Thanksgiving or Christmas with English-speaking friends gave me first-hand experience of the cultural aspects of the language. Maintaining motivation throughout the learning journey was crucial. I set specific achievable goals and celebrated my progress. Whether it was mastering a new set of vocabulary words, completing a book, or having a successful conversation in English, recognizing these achievements kept me motivated. I also surrounded myself with positive influences, joining study groups, connecting with other learners, and following inspirational language learning blogs and social media accounts provided a sense of community and encouragement. Learning a new language is a journey filled with both triumphs and challenges. As I navigated my way through English, I encountered numerous obstacles that tested my patience and determination. One of the most significant challenges I faced was dealing with the frustration of slow progress. In the early stages of my learning journey, I was enthusiastic and eager to see quick results. However, language acquisition is a gradual process, and progress often comes in small increments. There were days when I felt like I wasn't making any headway, and this lack of visible improvement was discouraging. I remember spending hours studying vocabulary and grammar only to forget the words or make mistakes in conversation. This constant struggle to remember and apply what I had learned left me feeling disheartened. Another obstacle was the fear of making mistakes. Language learning inherently involves trial and error, but my fear of embarrassment often held me back from practicing speaking. I was self-conscious about my accent, pronunciation, and potential grammatical errors. This fear was compounded by a few negative experiences where people corrected me harshly or laughed at my mistakes. These incidents made me hesitant to speak in public, especially in front of native speakers. To overcome these obstacles, I realized I needed a change in mindset and approach. First, I had to accept that making mistakes was a natural part of the learning process. Instead of viewing mistakes as failures, I began to see them as opportunities for growth. Each error was a chance to learn something new and improve. 
Embracing this perspective helped reduce my fear and anxiety about speaking English. I also found that joining a supportive community was crucial in overcoming my challenges. I became a member of a local language learning club where I met other learners who were facing similar struggles. This sense of camaraderie was immensely comforting. We shared our experiences, exchanged tips, and encouraged each other. Knowing that I wasn't alone in my journey provided a much-needed boost to my morale. Celebrating small victories became another key strategy. Instead of focusing solely on long-term goals, I started to recognize and celebrate minor achievements. Successfully completing a chapter in a grammar book, understanding a movie without subtitles, or holding a brief conversation in English were all milestones worth acknowledging. Celebrating these small wins kept me motivated and gave me the confidence to keep pushing forward. Staying motivated throughout the learning process was essential for my success. To maintain my motivation, I set clear and achievable goals. These goals served as benchmarks and gave me a sense of direction. I divided my goals into short-term and long-term objectives each contributing to my overall progress. One of my initial short-term goals was to pass an English proficiency exam. Preparing for the exam gave me a structured study plan and a tangible target to work towards. The preparation process involved rigorous practice in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. It was challenging, but having a clear goal in sight kept me focused and driven. The satisfaction of passing the exam was a significant morale booster and reinforced my belief in my ability to learn English. Another motivating goal was to have a fluent conversation with a native speaker. This goal was both exciting and intimidating. To achieve it, I sought out opportunities to practice speaking with native speakers through language exchange programs and meetups. Each conversation, regardless of how brief or imperfect, brought me closer to my goal. The day I had my first full conversation in English with a native speaker was a moment of immense pride and accomplishment. In addition to setting goals, I maintained motivation by incorporating English into my daily life in enjoyable ways. Watching English movies, reading books, listening to music, and participating in online forums kept the learning process interesting and engaging. These activities not only improved my language skills, but also made the journey more enjoyable. I also found inspiration from others who had successfully learned English. Reading about their experiences and the strategies they used provided valuable insights and encouragement. Language learning blogs, YouTube channels, and social media accounts dedicated to English learners became sources of motivation and practical advice. Seeing others overcome challenges similar to mine reminded me that progress was possible with persistence and effort. Another effective strategy was varying my study routine to keep it fresh and engaging. I alternated between different activities such as reading, listening, speaking, and writing. This variety prevented monotony and allowed me to address different aspects of language learning. For instance, I would spend one day focusing on vocabulary, another day practicing grammar, and another day engaging in conversation practice. This approach ensured a well-rounded learning experience and kept me motivated. To stay organized and track my progress, I maintained a language learning journal. In this journal, I recorded my daily practice, noted new words and phrases, and reflected on my learning experiences. This documentation not only helped me monitor my progress, but also served as a source of motivation. 
Looking back at my journal entries, I could see how far I had come, which reinforced my determination to keep going. Additionally, I set up a reward system to celebrate my achievements. For example, after completing a particularly challenging task or reaching a milestone, I would treat myself to something enjoyable, like a favorite meal or a day off to relax. These rewards provided positive reinforcement and made the effort feel worthwhile. Seeking feedback and constructive criticism was another important aspect of staying motivated. I actively sought feedback from teachers, language partners, and native speakers. Constructive criticism helped me identify areas for improvement and refine my skills. Instead of feeling discouraged by criticism, I viewed it as valuable guidance on my path to proficiency. Lastly, maintaining a positive attitude was crucial. There were times when progress felt slow and setbacks seemed overwhelming. During these moments, I reminded myself of my initial motivations and the reasons why I started learning English. Keeping my long-term goals in mind and visualizing the benefits of being fluent in English helped me stay focused and motivated. In conclusion, overcoming obstacles and staying motivated were integral parts of my language learning journey. By joining a supportive community, celebrating small victories, setting clear goals, and incorporating enjoyable activities into my routine, I managed to stay motivated and make consistent progress. The journey was filled with challenges, but the strategies I employed helped me navigate through them and continue moving forward. Each obstacle I overcame and each goal I achieved brought me closer to mastering the English language. The journey to learning English was long and challenging but it was also filled with rewarding milestones that marked my progress and kept me motivated. These milestones were significant indicators of how far I had come and served as powerful reminders of my capabilities.